Hey everyone, welcome back to NFA Review Channel. Today we have a new company. Well, I wouldn't say they're a new company, but they're new here to the channel. This is their first time on the channel. Everyone give a warm welcome to Griffin Armament. You guys have been wanting me to review their suppressors forever now, and we finally connected at SHOT Show, and here we are. So we have a lot of suppressors in queue from Griffin Armament, and the list is gonna keep on growing. Today, our first suppressor from them is gonna be the new Explorer line. So that we're gonna be reviewing their Explorer uh, 30 caliber with taper mount and utility mount. So you can see the pros and cons of each unit. Now, Griffin Armament has been around for quite some time and they have a pretty good uh, reputation in the industry of actually listening to the customer. And that's pretty evident by their model lineup. They have pretty much a suppressor for every single need and a mount for every single need. So no matter what, the end user will always have some way to adapt their suppressors to their host gun. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they really go far and beyond to create new mounting systems. We're gonna cover a new one today for the new Explorer here. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to it. We're gonna cover these, both of these here in the studio and then we're gonna get to the range and I'm gonna shoot both of them so you can see how the different mounts work. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, the top one here, we have the utility mount. We'll go ahead and open that up, show you what you get. Comes in a little cool little sock here, like a sunglass type sock thing. It's actually nice because it won't take up space in the safe like all the other giant cases I have. And then you have the utility mount suppressor. You have a taper lock brake. And then some takedown tools there in the bottom. We'll set that aside. And then over here, we have the taper mount version. Okay, again, comes with another taper mount, takedown tools in the bottom, decal manual, and the taper mount version. So, let's go ahead and cover the specs. Okay, the taper mount is on your left, and then of course the utility mount is on your right. So let's cover the overall length of both. So the taper mount comes in a little longer than the utility at 6.5 inches, and the utility mount version comes in at 6.3 inches. Both of them are gonna have a diameter of 1.5 inches. And then the weight on the taper mount is 10 ounces. And interesting enough, the weight on the utility is 11.8. So that mount interface in the back actually ups the weight a little bit, even though it's a shorter suppressor. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, pretty much everything's gonna be the same from here on out, okay? Now that we got the length out of the way and the weight out of the way. Overall construction is gonna be 17.4 heat treated stainless steel on both, of course, and then they're gonna be finished in a high temperature black Cerakote, uh, more of a uh, matte finish. As far as caliber rating, it's gonna be, you know, 30 caliber and below, okay, of course, so 5.56, all that stuff. And then of course, up to 300 wood mag for your maximum caliber that this can handle. And it is full auto rated and it has no minimum barrel length restrictions depending on the mounts that you use. That's what I got out of the website anyway. So go ahead and check that out, but pretty sure the vibe I got on these was no minimum barrel length restrictions. So these are uh, full auto rated and you go, we're running on a shorty, full send, and if anything happens, I'm sure they'll take care of you. Speaking of which, uh, they do have a warranty called their perpetual lifetime warranty. So it follows the suppressor, not the owner. So no matter what, not that there's a big use market on suppressors, but down the road, let's say 10 years from now, something happens, they will take care of you. Now, both of these had a net sound reduction on 762 of 29 decibels. Okay. And then the retail price on the taper mount is $8.95 and the retail price on the utility mount is $9.69. So now that we got the basic specs out of the way, let's kind of cover the special features of these bad boys. So we'll start with the utility mount because uh, that's the one that's the more versatile of the two. Starting at the back of the suppressor, you'll have a 1.375 by 24 mount interface, which is awesome. Now included with the Explorer, is their taper mount ring. Okay, so when this ring is installed in that 1.375 by 24 mounting area, you can use their taper 
mount brake, which I showed you earlier. And this is unidirectional. I believe there wasn't any shim, so you do not need to time it. Just throw it on and you're good to go. So that's one way to attach it. And it's the same mount that you would use for just their taper mount. Okay, this is not universal. This can only use their taper mounts available on their website. Now, if you wanted to use, say, a different system, like their new dual lock quick detach system, all you would do is use the included spanners in the kit, remove this adapter ring, and then you can use their new dual lock system, which is pretty slick. So we will be using this. Uh, they sent me a 30 caliber version, so we'll probably throw this whoop, on one of the 300 blackouts, and we'll give that a whirl. So basically, you know, when this is on the host gun, you just th uh, screw it on all the way till it stops, and then you tighten the locking ring. Now they do have very well written diagrams on the website that explain no and no go areas. Uh, you're definitely gonna want, going to want to make sure that you're using this mount properly. And that goes with all these quick detach mounts. A lot of them I've noticed from all the manufacturers, um, if you don't understand 100% how to use it, it might be slightly locked when you go to screw it on the Acme threads and you think it's seated all the way and then it shoots off at the range. So knowing your equipment is definitely half the battle. Okay, going back to the suppressor, you got some knurling here for grip. You do have their uh, serial number information here on the first section of the suppressor, and that is actually in the blast chamber area. So the first baffle starts right here at that weld line. Your engraving should be safe here. It is forward of where a bullet would, would uh, exit a mounting area. So looking at the threads here, your muzzle would probably end right around here. So that does expose the important information a little bit. Typically, when you have strikes on a suppressor, they happen forward here in this last couple inches of the suppressor as the bullet you know, might have clipped one of the first baffles and then it exits out the side of the suppressor, or usually that doesn't happen. Your, your most, uh, most things that I've seen are just in cap strikes, which are repairable. Um, but it is pretty far back. I'm sure if they wanted to, they can move it either, even further back on future uh, units, which is pretty much what everybody's doing now. Uh, finish looks nice. Welding looks great. This is a laser welded. You can see, I'll show some close-ups here. Uh, beautiful. Okay, it doesn't get any better than that. On the front cap, this does have an included flash hider built in. It does have what looks like to be, you know, like wrench flats on it, but this is not removable. Uh, that's just for looks, uh, but we'll definitely uh, be curious to see how well that flash hider end cap works. Uh, if you've been watching my rifle reviews that I've been doing recently, uh, during the, you know, I try to get out there in the morning so I have some shade in the trees before the sun breaks that tree line. Uh, so you can see if there's any jetting or glowing coming out of the front of these. So hopefully, uh, if there is any, we'll be able to capture it, but I should do a pretty good job of hiding any flash. And both, of course, have their new Eco Flow baffle stack system. So basically, everybody's kind of going to this. They're trying to decrease the back pressure. Uh, because the industry has noticed that there is a balance of metering at the muzzle, okay, and at the shooter's ear, okay. So if you strive for only building a suppressor that's super quiet out here, metered out front at the muzzle, you're probably going to have a bad time as the shooter versus an onlooker because you're getting so much back pressure, it's, it's giving you a pretty bad port pop and you actually have higher readings at the shooter's ear. So they're playing a little ballet there to uh, try to equalize everything. So a lot of the manufacturers are really putting some R&D time into making the baffle stacks less corked up, I guess you could say. So uh, Griffin Marmot calls theirs the EcoFlow system. Again, everybody's kind of going to that. It's gonna be interesting to see how well it does as far as gas in the face when we're shooting on a gas gun. I'll bring the M16 out there, we'll run it unsuppressed and then suppressed. And then it's probably gonna change the rate of fire a little bit, but I'm not gonna adjust the gas block and we'll see if the gun malfunctions or not. So in summary, you have two suppressors from the same line. One is dedicated more towards the precision crowd, okay, because it's taper only. And then this one is the more universal version at the cost of a couple ounces, not, not even a couple ounces, I think it's 1.8 ounces. And you know, 
hopefully more reliable weapon system, less port pop, both full auto rated. I am very curious to hear what this sounds like. I, I have never heard this suppressor yet, so I will be hearing it for the first time with you guys out in the range. As far as that, they sent me a box full of mounts for this video and future videos, which was awesome. So I'm gonna rummage through it and see what we can do as far as host for today's video, pack up the bags and hit the range. Let's go ahead and see what these things sound like. Steel. Steel. Dirt. Dirt. I was out again. Steel. Now I'm out. All right, let's do two birds, one stone here. We're gonna get the sound profile of downrange view and shoot for point of impact shift testing on the 308. So we're gonna start unsuppressed and then we're gonna throw on the Explorer and shoot suppressed and see if we get any shift. Let's get to it. Okay, so just shot unsuppressed. That's like the worst group I've ever shot with that gun, which I don't understand. I was shooting from a rest. I even had my gear bag behind me propped up underneath the rear of the stock. This thing with the reticle was super solid between each shot. Uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> what's going on there. I mean, I'm just shooting 147 grain ball ammo. I'm not shooting anything match grade, but still I should have shot better than that. Uh, so five shots, I was aiming dead center. Let's throw the suppressor on, see what happens.
Okay, well, reviewing the footage, everything shot right here. So it did tighten the group and it did not change the point of impact. So accuracy improved, point of impact unchanged. Pretty awesome. Wow, today we definitely explored the Explorer. Um, we shot a lot of hosts today, uh, more than usual. So we pretty much ran it through the gauntlet. Let's just start uh, right here at the 10 and a half inch. So on the way here, I was like, you know, I really wish I would have had one of the QD mounts for the 556, which I didn't have. Cause I was like, I wonder if that taper is gonna loosen under full auto fire. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't have that QD mount because we would have never known that that taper mount will not move under any circumstances. And that leads me to my next uh, conclusion here is I came out here thinking I was gonna like the utility mount better because of the QD lock, the dual lock system. And I left liking the taper mount better. So I did not expect that it made ease of reviewing a lot easier. I was able to just unscrew it, screw it on the next host. I didn't have to torque it on tight. It never loosened, even in full auto fire. The suppressor core sounds the same as the QD one. Thought that was pretty interesting. So yeah, that's my biggest takeaway so far. On the rate of fire on the 5.56, I kept the uh, rifle speed gas block on setting 10. This is a 11 and a half inch upper. Uh, so that was on setting 10. I shot it on setting 10 unsuppressed, put the suppressor on, and shot it again. I did not adjust the gas. Gun ran fine, didn't overgas it. It did speed up the cyclic rate a little bit, uh, but nothing that's going to beat up your gun. More importantly, I didn't get gassed out shooting full auto. I know it's a 30 caliber bore aperture, but that being said, I've been gassed out by 30 caliber cans on 5.56 in the past. So I'm definitely loving what everybody's doing here with these larger expansion chambers and lower, lower back pressure. Uh, zero discomfort out of my right ear. I've been shooting these things all day. When I shoot it with the suppressor, I take my ears off. I know that's probably eventually damaging my hearing long term, but that's the price I pay to review these for you guys because I'm not gonna be able to judge what it sounds like with earmuffs on. Sounded great, great tone on the 556. Moving up to the 300 blackout on this Radiant Arms SBR here. Sounded phenomenal. Of course, the mount worked great, didn't loosen. The dual lock system is pretty self-explanatory. You saw that in the studio, pretty slick. Um, but again, the taper mount did not back off. 300 blackout sounded magical as we expected. 16 inch 5.56 going back to the 5.56. Sounded great. No gas to the face, not much more to say there. Pretty shocked on how well it worked on 5.56. 308 actually tightened my groupings on the 308. Not expected, even though some suppressors do exhibit that behavior. 
stabilizing the gas flow behind the projectile. As you can see, when I shot this unsuppressed, it shot pretty crappy unsuppressed, which it typically doesn't do. I haven't cleaned it in like, I don't know, ever. So I probably need to <laughs> run some patches through there and clean it up. This thing's been used and abused. Usually it shoots tighter groups unsuppressed threw the suppressor on there and it tightened up the group and it did not shift. So awesome on that. I'm really trying to find a negative here, guys. I really am. I, you know, I try to find one dig, one complaint minimum for every suppressor I view and I'm really having a hard time coming up with it here. Uh, you know, if you like the 1.375 by 24 option, you have a bunch of mounts already at home, get the utility. If you want to kind of start over and try their mounting systems out, the taper's the way I would go. It's not how I thought this would go, guys. I, I really was going to be all gung-ho on the utility system here, and uh, the taper did not loosen under full auto, full auto fire on any of these hosts. So, yeah, pretty shocked on that one. So, I guess I don't have any complaints, which really sucks, because I really want to, you know, help these companies improve their product in any way I can. We didn't get any muzzle flash jetting that I saw when I reviewed the footage here. Um, I apologize for the lighting issues. We have like a cold front system moving in soon, even though it's like 85 degrees and humid as hell out here. Uh, we're gonna have one more cold snap. So the wind is just crazy and the clouds keep moving. So my exposure rate kept just changing all day. It was a real pain in the ass. Uh, but the shade during those cloudy times al allowed us to really get a good look at if we were gonna get any jetting here out of the front of the suppressor. And I didn't notice any when I reviewed the footage here. So the flash suppressor built into the front works as well. So yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to review more Griffin Armament suppressors. We have to find a fault somewhere. <laughs> uh, but the new Explorer, uh, yeah, it is a pretty awesome can, I have to say. So stamp of approval from me, for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Shout out to my Black Card member, Scott Clemens from White House, Tennessee, and Glenn Price from Day City, Florida. They're my two Black Card members. Uh, they go above and beyond what's required to get the 20 discounts at the gold tier. If you want more information on that, check out uh, patreon.com slash NFA review and go to the gold tier and you'll see that list that I talk about in every video. So click that like and subscribe button, guys. We have like 25, 26 more videos coming at you soon. See you next time.